My name is Stacey Simanjuntak. Uh, I'm a socio-political analyst uh, on the issue of democracy and democratization in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm Indonesian, but I'm based in Singapore. I am associated with the Institute of Southeast Asian uh, Studies, ICSU Sophie Isaac Institute. And I've been working on this issue since 2004. I think uh, in all of these elections uh, all, all across the region, um, there are diff different elements that are featuring in these elections. And these elements pertain to the um, a national context of each nation, of course. So there are, of course, populism, uh, a, of, uh, patronage, uh, money politics maybe, mobilization of ethnic and religious identities, uh, as well as emphasis on religion. Yet uh, there's not one thing that uh, is used all across the Southeast Asian uh, region. So each country has different elements. And whether these elements or these strategies are uh, useful to gain victories by the coalitions that use them, uh, it also pertains to the national context itself. So I think what is the same, uh, what is common uh, all across the elections in Southeast Asia is maybe the electoral democracy itself. So electoral democracy is still seen as the primary source for political legitimacy all across uh, Southeast Asia. So the act of voting is seen as very important. People do vote and people do f flock to the voting booth to um, vote for uh, change or status quo uh, and their uh, preference is still uh, seen as very important for the government to form government. Uh, but of, co of course there is a question of whether or not the elections themselves fulfill the democratic uh, prerequisite of it being fair and free and also you know there are other procedural aspects that have to be fulfilled for for an, an election for example whether everybody could vote you know the political uh, equality and also whether the government that that results from this election uh, is constitutional or not um, the the ultimate aim of democracy of pr procedural democracy is to achieve substantive democracy, which is the one that emphasizes on the result of the election, right? So, uh, for example, whether election will bring a socioeconomic betterment for the citizen and whether uh, this will improve uh, uh, ruler accountability, um, also a rule of law, whether or not uh, the substantial uh, freedom for oppositional voices is accommodated. So far, I think the trend is there has been a uh, countries that follow the trajectory of populism in, in Southeast Asia. We see back in 2016, President Duterte of Philippines, uh, he won the election with the campaign that emphasized on his promise to uh, personally lead the you know, restoring of law and order and the dismantling of entrenched elite. Um, and he waged the war against drugs, highlighting that there is a drug problem is in itself very important. The means uh, with which he was uh, eradicating drugs are uh, bringing some concern for international public uh, because uh, he's using extrajudicial uh, methods. So populism is, is very attractive, right? We saw also the rise of populism in 2014 Indonesian presidential election, in which um, the figure of the opponent of the then go Jakarta governor, Joko Widodo, who's now the president of Indonesia, the opponent was a uh, former Lieutenant General Prabowo, and his uh, campaign focuses on him being a strong man, right? So very popular strategies there, uh, which hark back to the years of new order uh, under Suharto. This is not surprising because uh, Prabowo was the son-in-law of Suharto. Prabowo might have lost in 2014, but he still gearing up for 2019. Within the last two years, he and his allies have been uh, making gains actually in Indonesia politics by uh, uh, engaging these Islamist groups and making this uh, Islamist nationalist um, coalition. So, yeah, all of these are very uh, worrying, um, yet we see that the, the trend is there and uh, it will not likely to uh, fade away like that yeah, because it has been successful. We saw uh, the landslide victory of the opposition coalition in Malaysia have shown that there is a positive development 
on the state of democracy in Southeast Asia. Uh, this is also particularly because it is such a very surprising uh, victory. And I think since independence of Malaysia in 1957, there was never any election that resulted in the transfer for power and also, you know, ending the rule of uh, Barisan Nasional. This was made possible due to uh, deep concern that the public felt about the former Prime Minister Najib's administration, as well as the allegation of massive corruption, but also because of a split of Malay vote, basically. The um, Malaysian politics have been race-based. There is a long history, long trajectory of race-based policies in Malaysia that, would, that made people think that Malay vote would be solid. But in the election, we saw that Malay vote was split. And I think in the recent interview uh, with Dr. Mahathir, he also mentioned that there was a split between the rural Malay vote and the urban Malay vote. And the latter, the urban Malay vote, was the one that inclined to vote for Pakatan Harapan. Yet, it also uh, showed us that an election can really bring about uh, substantial change, even in the situation in which gerrymandering uh, and patronage were rampant. Uh, so that we, we see that as a very positive development. If we go to Indonesia, actually the situation is a bit worrying, like I said, because Prabowo and his allies uh, have gain success with uh, their way of using populist strategies and rhetorics. And it culminated in 2017 in very bitter sectarian campaigning, which resulted in the victory of Anis Baswedan against incumbent Jakarta governor, back then a Chinese uh, Christian governor, uh, Ahok. Despite uh, the incumbent governor's uh, achievement, a lot of achievement in governance, uh, you see that uh, bitter sectarian campaigning and populist strategies are successful in Indonesia. So uh, the 2018 local elections in Indonesia uh, have shown that it has been a loss of PDIP because all across uh, 17 provinces in Indonesia, PDIP only won six. So Golkar in this way uh, became quite an important government uh, party because he uh, Golkar won nine out of 17. So uh, Golkar uh, fared much better than uh, PDIP in the local election. I have written articles that says that uh, there is no connection between, there is no uh, direct connection between local elections to national election in 2019. Yet it does not mean that uh, 2018 local election will not have any bearing on the 2019 uh, presidential election. Uh, one other thing that might have a influenced the 2019 are the new uh, leaders that have been uh, uh, elected in the local election. So the winners of the local elections, uh, especially the new governors. So I think Jokowi uh, could feel very happy because of three big provinces, the largest provinces in Indonesia, which is West Java, East Java, and Central Java. All of the elected winners have said that they would support Jokowi. So the figure and the political preference of governors are very important, um, but not uh, the political coalition in, in the local election, because the political coalitions in uh, local elections uh, do not reflect uh, national competition. So they do not reflect the coalitions at the national level.